the powerful direct selection tool in CS6 and CC. Hello, hello, let's talk about an unsung hero in Photoshop, the direct selection tool. Let's start in Photoshop CS6 and work our way up. In web design projects, we'll rely on shapes a lot. These are our foundation, and without editing them efficiently, you'd be in serious trouble. Here I have a rectangle, and I'd like to adjust two of its corners. I want to move them towards the inside of the rectangle. How can we do that? If we try to use Control T, you don't have individual controls for each corner unless you resort to various trickery. You could right click and select perspective, but that doesn't give me the precision I'm looking for. In comes the direct selection tool. Its hotkey is A, and it's the white one from the left panel. Please don't confuse it with the black cursor as that does something different. So while we have the direct selection tool active, plus we're on a shape layer, we can drag and select an individual corner. See how this top left point is now black? That's called an anchor point, and its color tells us it's selected. If we swipe again in the top right corner, we'll select that instead. If you want to get them both, you can add shift into the mix. I'm now holding it down, and I'm dragging again. Great, now I have them both selected. This isn't that spectacular, as I could have swiped like this and gotten them both in one go, but if your points are in various places, Shift will get you out of a jam. You'll also notice the rectangle has a dark stroke of sorts. That tells us we have it selected and it's called a path. If you don't see it, you have to use Control H. So this is the direct selection tool and this allows us to modify any anchor point of any shape. I'll get the top left one again and now with the Move tool active, I'll use my arrow keys to nudge it to the right. I could also move it with my mouse directly, and if I hold the shift key, I'll move it in a straight line. Through this tool, you can adjust shapes as much as you want, but again, shapes, not raster layers, not smart objects, not text layers. You'll have to practice to get used to it. For example, if you click outside it, you'll see you'll deselect those anchor points, or if you use the black arrow by mistake, the path selection tool, you'll see it'll show you all points and you won't be able to select them individually unless you move to the direct selection tool. So let's recap. The direct selection tool is fantastic for modifying shape layers. You can select individual anchor points and move them freely. With it, you can achieve many new shapes, and this is not limited to rectangles. You can use it on custom shapes as well. As you can see, it works like a charm. We'll talk more about it when we talk about the pen tool. The direct selection tool is a necessity in Photoshop CS6 due to a major inconvenience. Rounded rectangles are highly used in web design for many things, especially buttons. As you recall, you can adjust its corner radius from the options bar. Let's go with 10 pixels. OK, the roundness is correct, but I want this shape much bigger. Let's resize it with Control T. Notice the difference. The corner radius of 10 pixels we previously set is out the door. This creates a whole load of trouble because it limits the use of the transform command. Without Control T, our speed will be seriously affected. Imagine having random corner radiuses throughout your project. That's going to make you look like a newbie in both the client's and developer's eyes. That's where the powerful direct selection tool comes into play. Here's how you enlarge a rounded rectangle in CS6 and maintain its set corner radius. You select the two right edges like so, and now you can use your mouse to enlarge it like so. Remember, Shift constrains it to a straight line. Alternatively, you can use your arrow keys combined with Shift to expand it in 10 pixel increments. When you're done on one side, you move to the other one. Is this ideal? No, not really, but it's the best you can do in CS6, and this is why the direct selection tool is critical in your workflow. There is another option I use occasionally. You start with a regular sized rounded rectangle and you enlarge it. Nothing new, the corners are still messed up. But if you click once on the canvas, you'll get this new window where you can input your precise measurements. The important thing is this. If you have another shape layer selected and you click on the canvas to create a new one, you'll automatically get its measurements here. So now if I click OK, I'll have the size I obtained with Control T, but a 10 pixel corner radius. And that's the direct selection tool in CS6. 
In Photoshop CC, it's a whole different story. Let's repeat the process there. Give it a second to load. OK, so a rounded rectangle with a 10 pixel radius. Now, we'll seriously enlarge it with Ctrl T, but the corners remain unaffected. That's why it pays to upgrade. In the CC version, you no longer must use the direct selection tool to preserve your corner radius. You can still use it to manipulate your shapes, so it's still an important tool, but now you can transform without worry. Plus, a big upgrade over CS6 is this Live Shape Properties panel. From here, you can easily input a new corner radius. In CS6, what you put in is what you get. Here, you have complete flexibility. So that's the direct selection tool in both major releases of Photoshop. I advise you to enlarge a rectangle with the technique I previously showed you, even if you have the latest version. You'll see it'll come in handy in lots of situations. Have fun!